We're gonna introduce now pandas series and also we're gonna introduce pandas as a general thing because the previous video was more as a as an overview of the library we want to start using it for real now the first thing that i have to tell you is that similarly to the way we import numpy with this alias with this shorthand np we're going to do the same thing with pandas with the shorthand pd all right so this is a convention it's not necessary but again try to follow it so everybody understands what you are doing and what you're talking about so again the first data structure that pandas uh, has is the series is this column this column sort of vector you see right here and, and it's gonna be a lot more from what we see right here it's gonna again grow in in power and and complexity too uh, with the following videos but to get started you can think of it as this just very simple linear um or array or, or vector whatever in whatever way you want to say it the first thing I, we want we have to note is that the type is actually series capitalized so it's it's a class this is, this is going to create an object and we usually again we import it as pd and we just do pd.series to create it generally speaking you will usually be importing this data from or reading this data from for example a database or a csv file or a json file so you're seldom creating series manually as we are doing in this lesson but after all we have to start with something and this is usually the simplest way to start also we want to show you how to create the series because there are multiple ways to create them so again at the beginning it looks a lot as a just to be honest pretty simple Python list, right? So as a NumPy array or a Python list, it's just um, regular data structure sequential. So the elements that we have created in it, um, one, two, three, four, five, etc., they are all placed in order. This is an ordered data structure. And it has indices similar to, again, a Python list. In the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's zero indexed again as a Python list. One important thing from series is that similar to NumPy, a series will have a defined data type. In this case, this series was automatically set as an integer 64 series. And this is again the same type used by NumPy. This is actually the NumPy data type. So again, every series will have a defined once we have a series, we will be I, I will be introducing a couple of methods. The first one is the head method, which shows you just an extract of the series. In this case, we only have five elements, but if you have more, if you have a million, for example, you're reading a million prizes, the head will only give you the first five you can also pass a parameter here and say i want to read the first 20 for example usually we use head just to give an idea of what this series is about and again this series has an associated type that we can check with the d type attribute you can set the type of the series manually so let's say you you understand and you know what data type you're reading so you can force it with the d type um, attribute in the constructor. In this case, you see that we're passing the same information, one, two, three, four, five, as integers. This the list is the same, but the series is created as a float, and now the type is set as a float. Let's check very quickly what we have with uh, strings. Remember that strings are these types that NumPy and of course pandas will not be so good at handling. To be honest, pandas is going to be a little bit more. I don't know. Um, for giving with them we actually have a, a very good sub library within pandas to manage strings but the associated type in this case is going to be object okay so object is kind of I don't know what it is or actually I know it's a string but it's not it's not numeric so I'm gonna just assign the object type remember this is gonna be a good sign of something going wrong in your in your data handling process once you um, read some data type for example you're reading prices and they are parsed as objects so that means that something went wrong there we're of course gonna deal about that uh, in the cleaning section um, and again other types of creating these series are just using uh, arrays or what I'm gonna show you really quickly 
using a combination of the of the elements that we want to store and the index. So as you can see right here, a series at the beginning so far, up, up to this point we could say, the line 8, a series looked a lot like, for example, a regular Python list. Every element is zero indexed. But with these examples, what we're showing you is that a series is actually a little bit more like a ordered Python dictionary, if you allow the analogy. It's a regular data structure with sequential ordered data, but you can decide what index you want to use for it. So in this case, we are setting that the element 1 is indexed under the value A, for example. And as we have these dictionary-like uh, structure, we can actually use a dictionary to create a series, as you can see right here. So moving forward, what can we do once we have the series? I'm going to construct a series, as you can see right here. And what we have is, again, the data type is included. We can also access the underlying NumPy array that is backing this series. If you remember from the NumPy videos, I told you that NumPy was used by Pandas, but Matplotlib and many other libraries in the Python data science stack. So again, Pandas is using NumPy internally to represent the data efficiently. And you can actually access that given NumPy array directly from the series. The array that it's backing your series is available under series.values. You can also get a handle to the, of the index, so we can inspect in detail the index of our series. Again, A, B, C, D, E, these are index. We can get a handle on that just with the index attribute. And we can also check the number of dimensions of the series, which to be honest, it's always going to look a little bit obvious. It's, it looks like a series is a one dimensional object. To be honest, we will see later that a series can have more than one dimension. Um, and also we can check the shape, which in this case is just five elements. And finally the size, which is the total count of, of elements. Again, so far we're only dealing with a one dimensional data structure. So both number of dimensions and shape and size, they all look like an overkill kind of methods. But again, once we introduce more, more dimensions, it's going to make a little bit more sense. So this is the beginning of it. Let's actually see a more compelling example in which we are pulling data from, in this case, we call the group of seven. You can access the Wikipedia article, but basically seven countries that are usually the richest countries or the more, the most influential countries in the world. Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom and the United States. All right. And let's start making this series look a little bit more compelling from the data analysis, if you want perspective, so it's a little bit easier to handle them. The first thing is we're creating the series only with the values of population of these countries. Okay, so we know this is Canada, and we know this is France, and we know this is Germany. Why do we know? Because we are just following this order. So nothing is telling us that actually that's the case. Okay, so we will, of course, use indices to make that a little bit more readable. So at the beginning, we have these values that represent the populations of these countries. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to assign this series a name. Okay, and this might not look so useful now. It's a little bit of like extra documentation if you want. But once we introduce data frames, it's going to make a lot more sense. So this is the name of our series. The D type of our series, um, I think it's it's obvious it's a float and again we have the usual attributes that basically tells us we have seven countries in there what about the index well we have nothing as the index yet it's a range index it's what it says and again it's zero to one two three four five six seven we are not accessing elements yet we're going to show you in a couple of minutes how to access uh, elements but if you you if you be accessing an element, for example, if you wanted to read this country, you're going to be using the index three. But actually, let's set an actual index, one that it's a little bit more compelling, one that lets us read and understand a series a little bit better. In this case, we're setting the index directly. We're just overriding the regular range index that it had. We're overriding it directly with this list, right, that represents each one of the countries. So now line 20 now here is very important. 
this is what our series looks like now okay this is our series and if you think about it it's kind of an, an excel spreadsheet which is one column the index and that given column so again remember from our previous lesson when i told you that the data frame is going to be a combination of series well you can start saying that here this is just one series which is just one column in this case we're only expressing the population of each one of these countries um, a couple more methods so you can you can get a little bit more familiarized with indices to be honest indices will be kind of hard to understand at the beginning it, it doesn't seem to usually doesn't seem to click so uh, so early what's the purpose of the index you're gonna understand with time how important they are and of course why they are so important I just want you to trust me here and please double check always your indices and try to make sense out of them and try to make peace with them because they're going to be very very important so first we can reset research uh, back the index and what i'm doing right here is something that we want to do it very early is show you the immutability nature of pandas in this case i'm running this reset index that it's resetting the index if you want but all these methods are immutable so in this case we are not changing the original one it's returning a new series and it's going to make a little bit more sense more sense once i show you the next method but again if you follow these lines what you have is this is the series i run a method it's look it looks like something has changed but once i look again at the series it hasn't changed okay this is returning a new series because this is an immutable method this is something we want to start talking about early we actually have an entire lesson on the immutability immutable nature of pandas but right now we can see another uh, uh, the first example something else is what happens if you do want to mutate the series if you do want to change it in that case you're going to use reset index and you're going to use the argument in place equals true so now we have just dropped the um the whole index so finally a couple more uh, methods to create series we saw them you can create the series directly with the combination of the values and the indices or with a dictionary or actually you can pass other series to create this series um, so far the focus of this lesson is to get you familiarized with the series the next upcoming video that you should just check right now because it's going to be very important is how to access individual elements of the series so far the only thing we've been able to do is create the series we're going to start accessing and gathering elements one by one indexing elements one by one from this series